Hello, my name is Calvin Darren, Pool Specification Manager here at Rhino. Today we'll be looking at what does a compliant balcony or terrace look like when we're talking about fire. Now I've got some case studies to share with you and we're going to go through um, what this looks like in reality. Now a really interesting scheme uh, that we completed with um, at Avantgarde in Shoreditch. 224 apartments all needing refurbishment of the existing combustible decking being stripped out and replaced with new non-combustible decking to bring it up to the latest fire classification. And what's really interesting with this scheme was that at the time uh, there was occupied apartments, um, there, was a, there wasn't a, the, the possibility of having scaffolding up around the building. So all the refurbishment has to be done from the internal, which obviously from a logistical standpoint is much more complex. Now, before all that happened, what did we have to do to understand the overall scope? Now, when you're taking existing timber out and replacing with new non-combustible decking, first of all, what should we do as that finished floor surface that's going to meet that compliance options? Well, timber and obviously composite are non-compliant because the highest level of fire classification that you can achieve with a, uh, with a composite deck is a B rating. So what did that leave us in terms of non-combustible? Well, we could look down the route of paving. Paving does add a significant amount of weight to that existing balcony structure. So obviously checking compliance from that standpoint is really important as well. Alternatively, we could look at a lighter weight stone, the likes of a porcelain, or what needs to go on when we're doing paving of any type on a balcony. We need to be making sure that it's safe um, and making sure that we've got obviously adequate weight or, make it or uh, fixings down for the paving to stop any wind uplift or similar. As an alternative, we could also go down the route of the lights on aluminium decking. Now, this was what we actually did on Avantgarde uh, in Shoreditch. <clears throat> and the reason we went down this route was because, A, it was most similar to what had been there previously. So from a planning perspective, it obviously tied in much more with the existing look and feel of the building already. Secondly, once we'd understood that we were going down the aluminium decking route, we then had to understand what the existing steel framework of the balcony was going to look like. The reason we had to do this was so that we could start to understand required spacings and spans, the build-ups, and also understand what particular deck board is going to be needed. Aluminium decking comes in all different span capabilities, thicknesses, and basically for all different purposes. So we needed to understand all these different aspects. We work very closely with Fletcher Crane Architects in order to determine these parameters. Now you can see here on the screen um, the balcony detailing and from a balcony um, decking uh, standpoint we need to understand the width between the deck boards to make sure it's compliant in terms of the floor surface. The British standard BS8579 sets out a maximum of 8mm between the deck boards themselves. Around the perimeter we have to allow a 10 to 12mm perimeter gap that is for drainage purposes and obviously helps in the instance of expansion and contraction. Now with the decking, uh, we obviously were then able to look at the different colour options. Now colour is a really important one because as aluminium decking is powder coated, being able to match a colour to the framework of the balcony was a huge advantage. But obviously different colours are made from different um, organic material and therefore from fire compliance, having that full row colour range tested to achieve that minimum fire classification of A2, S1, D0 uh, was really important. Now balconies obviously form part of the external facade of the building, um, have to be non-combustible, uh, non so that was obviously our number one aim there as well. Now we take a look at the next image here uh, that we have, and what we can start to see is the underside of the balcony. You can start to see that build up, and what you'll notice is that from the existing timber um, deck surface, there was obviously that build-up that was required. So here we used aluminium joists and support cleats. That gave us that height adjustment and then meant that we could then fix the deck board on achieving our finished, uh, our level threshold and that finished floor level. Now, the other area to consider here when looking at your refurbishment of a non-combustible deck is obviously your handrail height. Bringing the new decking up to that finish, uh, that level threshold can often compromise the existing handrail height. Maintaining that 1100 is really, impo really important. Maintaining compliance in one area, but letting it go in another is obviously not good enough. So compliance all round is really important and taking that really holistic approach um, is key right from the outset. Collaboration between uh, architect, contractor, manufacturer, supplier um, is also really important to understand that every detail is catered for right throughout that whole design process. 
Now, some other interesting points at Avant Garde uh, was in relation to sustainability. From a sustainability point of view, we wanted to reduce the wastage on site as much as possible. So therefore, in this instance, we actually worked with cuts of length deck boards, and that obviously reduced that, um, as well as making it easier to handle the deck boards once on site as well. So it helped to streamline that process, and that's something that's always worth considering at early stage design. Now, another interesting scheme, because obviously when we're about talking about balconies, that is very different to a roof terrace. Now, interesting scheme at South End, uh, right down on the seafront there, a very nice project. And we were looking at the roof terrace in particular. Now, the roof terraces, as they form part of the roof, have to comply with part five of EN 13501. And that is for the roofing classification, that is the fire resistance, um, or looking at the fire penetration through the overall roof deck into the building itself. Now that fire classification is B roof T4 and B roof T4 is really looking not so much at the level of combustibility but as I say that penetration through that roof build up into the compartments below. Now what that means is that we're actually able to use elements of combustible materials, the likes of plastic pedestals, waterproofing membranes, combustible insulation and so on. How does that get passed? Well the actual test itself and takes in that full system build up when it is tested rather than being an isolated component or looking at a reaction to fire from a component perspective. Now there's a number of ways obviously if we don't have that full system test carried out that we can start to overcome that and still maintain compliance. That comes through the European Commission decision. A common one that is seen is by using the light of a layer of 50 millimeter ballast over the top of those combustible elements and to provide that fire protection or resist that fire penetration. The test itself is looking at burning brands, wind and obviously that radiant heat. And so it's taking the, really the whole aspect into consideration of that overall roof buildup. But as you can see here with the South End project, that was working with a plastic pedestal. Now the question is, can we paint every brush with the same, every canvas with the same brush? Um, and I guess the answer is, well, how much do we want to future proof our building? And as architects, designers, being able to design for 10, 15, 20 years time and beyond, leaving behind us a legacy of quality, something that's gonna stand that test of time and obviously leaving it for the oncoming generations, that feeling of safety that we may not have seen in the past. So that's where we, an interesting team at IKEA Hammersmith came in because whilst we could have worked with plastic pedestals, combustible insulation, um, there was a lot more that we could have done, but going above and beyond compliance was absolutely essential for this project. With the apartments around the edge of the um, this 6,000 square meter podium, we worked with a TerraSmart rail system. And instead of just working with those plastic pedestals I mentioned, we went a fully non-combustible system. The insulation was, was non-combustible. There was also the addition of a layer of 50 mil ballast over the top to additionally add to that fire penetration resistance. Achieving more than just that b roof T4, but working to that non-combustible, we're achieving a minimum of A2 um, S1D0 fire classification. Now you can see here the overall build-up. You can see those rails, the aluminium joists, and then obviously the mild steel pedestals supporting those porcelain tiles, that 50 mm ballast over the top as well. As I say, working to that high level of compliance is really important in order to future-proof the design. Other elements to consider, the likes of planters, um, that is a commonly debated topic as to whether planters should be combustible or non-combustible. They don't typically form part of that roof uh, structure, but obviously considering the fire risk, is also really important. So working closely with fire engineering consultants at early stage design, again, is gonna to help to overcome and mitigate any issues further down the line. Coordination between paving, street lamps, planters, abutments, facades, there's a whole lot to consider and that's really, really important. We take everything in uh, to consideration as early on in the stage as possible. As I keep saying, collaboration, 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 really, really important right through that overall scheme. Interesting, you can see here really nice detail, that lamppost falling neatly between those pavers, not requiring any extra cuts. It meant that the detailing was very, very, per uh, was very perfect in terms of the setting out and gave the contractor a much easier method of working because they had set grid lines in order to work to and achieve the overall finish that the landscape architect had set out. That extra uh, level of preparation time starts to streamline the overall process, overcoming those common challenges and pitfalls that we can often face um, once we actually get on site. 
And that's a very whistle-stop tour um, of obviously what does a compliant balcony or terrace look like. And if you want to find out more, then do reach out to us. We'd be happy to open discussion further, support you on your projects, or just very simply invite you to the studio down in Clerkenwell. Um, come in for a coffee, have a look around, and we'd be glad to talk with you further. My name is Calvin. Enjoy the rest of your day.